Hey you guys, today we will analyze the differences between the SKR Mini E3 version 1.2 and version 2.0. And we will also install and test the V2 and the TFT 35E3 version 3.0 display on the Creality Ender 3. You want to know more? So stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back. But before we start, please support the channel and click like. And if you are not a subscriber yet, go ahead and click on subscribe and follow us also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So, some time ago, Big Tree Tech released the SKR Mini E3 version 1.2 board. This board was designed to be a plug and play upgrade for the Creality Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro and Ender 5 3D printers. This board is equipped with a 32-bit microcontroller and four TMC's 2209 drivers. Recently, Big Tree Tech released a new version, the Mini E3 version 2.0. This new version also comes with a 32-bit microcontroller and with several improvements over the previous one, such as onboard sensorless homing pins. This new version includes the diag pins to easily bypass the end stops and enable the sensorless homing. Dual Z stepper motor output. If you plan or already have the dual Z stepper motor setup, you can connect both motors directly to the board. External EEPROM. Having an external EEPROM has many advantages, such as higher read and write speeds, much higher read and write number of cycles, and a much longer time of retention of data. The PCB was also redesigned and now has four layers and better heat dissipation for the stepper drivers. On the V2, the components around the drivers are placed further apart. The bed MOSFET is more powerful and there are more outputs. However, there is one thing that is better in version 1.2 and it's the connector markings. Because of the new design, the V2 does not have free space and therefore lost the screw type connector labels. On both and on the back side, the signals for each pin are identified. The solder quality is also good on both boards. As we mentioned in the beginning, these boards are plug and play, which means that the SKR boards have the same form factor and the same connectors as the stock board. But there's one small difference that you need to be aware of, and we will cover this in a few seconds. On GitHub, we can find lots of information on these boards, including pinout and wiring schematic for BLTouch sensor, Big Tree Tech's UPS, and relay. And this is the TFT display. Also designed as a plug and play upgrade for the Ender 3 and 5 display, it comes with a knob, a cable for the serial connection, and a flat cable for the traditional EXP connection. At the back, there are many connectors, but the most important are the USB that allows the use of a flash drive, the memory card slot, where we can use this one instead of the printer slot, the Wi-Fi connector making it possible to install a small Wi-Fi module, and the two display connectors. The display works in two ways. You can use the touch feature, but for that you need to connect the display with the RS-232 cable to the board or use it the traditional way with the knob and for that you connect the display with the flat cable. The SKR board will also work with the stock display and the TFT display will also work with the stock board. But here you cannot use the touch feature. So let's start with the installation. Before installing the board you need to glue the small heat sinks that come in the package on the stepper drivers. On the V2, you don't need to worry and check if the heat sinks are touching the surrounding components, since, like we said, they are far apart. But for the version 1.2, you need to check this. Open the panel by removing the three screws. 
On the Ender 3, the screws and panel are located on the top side, but on the Ender 3 Pro, one of the screws is at the top and the other two screws and panel are on the bottom side. Most of the cables connected to the board have labels on them, but some don't, so make sure you label them before removing them from the stock board. To remove the stock board, you need to unscrew the four screws. Before installing the new board, we recommend to make a small modification to the wires that connect to the screw type connectors. Creality normally tends the wires with solder, which is a bad idea, so we recommend you to cut the tin wire tips and crimp ferrules on them. The ferrules provide a much safer connection. Then, start with the wires that are connected to the screw type connectors. With the wires connected to the screw type connectors, you can place the board and secure it with the screws. Next are the two fan wires. The red and black connects the fan that cools down the board, and the yellow and blue connects the side layer cooling fan. This is the only connection that you need to connect differently. On the SKR board, the layer cooling fan must be connected at the edge of the board, and the electronics fan must be connected to the inner connector. Next are the X, Y and Z end stop connections. Then the bed and hot end thermistor connections. And the stepper motor connections. For the Z and for the V2 there are two Z outputs, but since they are connected in parallel, you can connect to any of them. And finally, the display connection. If you have the stock display or don't care about the touch feature on the TFT display, you need to connect the flat cable here. If you plan on using the TFT display and the touch feature, you need to connect the serial cable here. For the touch display, and since we want to test the touch feature and the non-touch feature, we will have to use and connect both cables. At the back of the board, you can find a pinout for the connections. But if you have the board already installed, don't worry. On one end of the cable, you have a four pin connector and a single pin. This pin is the reset pin. So taking that into account, the pin next to it is the RX pin, then the TX pin, then the ground, and finally the power pin. That being said, you need to connect the wire with the reset pin here and the 4-pin cable next to it. Make sure the cable is not twisted. Don't forget to connect the electronics fan and close the panel. To install the TFT display, first remove the two screws that secure the display mount. Disconnect the flat cable, pull the knob out and uninstall the stock display by removing the four screws at the back. Place the new display and secure it with the same four screws. Don't over tighten these screws because if you do, the touch panel might be pushed against the metal panel and because of that, it could get unresponsive. With the display secured, Place the knob. Connect the flat cable here. And the serial cable here. Then install the metal mount back. Last but not least, arrange the cables. Ok, we are ready to turn the printer on and test. The first time we turn on the printer, the display gives the option to choose 
to use the touch feature or the classic version. If we select the touch feature, we enter this main screen. At first, it might display the message that the printer is not connected. But if everything is OK and the serial cable is correctly connected, a few seconds later, it establishes the communication with the board and the message goes away. At that time, we get the temperature readings on the screen. Clicking on the menu icon, we get a lot of options such as heat and fan where we can heat up the nozzle and bed, control the layer cooling fan and the button to turn off the heaters. Movement where we can home the printer, move each axis and level the bed, extrude where we can load and unload the filament, emergency stop, G-code and this is a very nice feature. Sometimes we want to send G-code commands to the printer and the only way we can do that is by using a PC, but here you can do that directly from the display. In custom we have some more options and note that the nozzle and bed temperatures are always on the display as we travel along the menus. This is also a nice thing to have. In settings we have a few more buttons. The screen allows us to rotate the image, calibrate the touch, change the language, turn the sound on and off and also the option to change the background and font colors when in Marlin mode. In machine, we can set up several things, but the most important is the parameter. Here, we can change several machine parameters, such as steps per millimeter, stepper driver current, max feed rate, max acceleration, and so on. In feature, we have a few more nice to have configurations. In info, we can check the board and display information. In disconnect, we will terminate the serial communication between the display and the board and in UART, we'll change the baud rate of the serial communication between the display and the board. To switch between modes, we simply keep the knob pressed for a few seconds and we get the selection screen back. We just need to touch the Marlin mode icon to enter this mode. Here we have the traditional screen with the environment and menus we are familiar with. We also ran some tests with a BL Touch setup. The brown, red and orange wires are connected in the BL Touch connector. The white and black wires can be connected to the BL Touch connector or in the Z and Stop connector depending on the firmware settings of the version you get. Anyway, for the BL Touch to work, we had to edit and flash a new firmware into the board. We downloaded the latest firmware version for Marlin's website and enabled the BL Touch. Since the SKR board is a 32-bit board, we cannot use Arduino IDE. We need to use Visual Code Studio and Platform I.O. to compile it. The compiled firmware is saved as a bin file that we need to copy to the memory card. When the printer boots up, the firmware is automatically uploaded from the memory card to the board. If you want to try our bin file, you can find the link for it and also the BL Touch support mount in the video description. The SKR boards are a very nice upgrade over the stock one of the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. The TMCs on these two boards produce better print quality when compared with the stock board equipped with the Allegro drivers and make the motors run silent. And when together with the TFT display, both bring many cool and powerful features to the machine. Well, that's it you guys, any questions or comments let us know in the comment section below. We will see you guys next time.
Bye.